everything you do this year is going to be related to the National Professional Standards for Teachers, which was developed by ATSL uh, and came out of the Melbourne Declaration. There are 37 standards and they relate back to seven main standards. Uh, I'll go over this later. But each of them have to be demonstrated in order for you to get your graduate proficiency uh, and demonstrate that you have an understanding of what it means to be a teacher. So you're demonstrating knowledge and understanding. You don't have to demonstrate the standards, you have to demonstrate a knowledge and understanding. So what we're gonna do is I'll be asking a series of questions um, over the course of this semester and you'll need to put down your answers. Uh, I'll go into more detail on, in that in a later podcast. And as you reflect on them, you're demonstrating your knowledge. Now, can I also suggest when you do this that you take a copy of them so you can put them in your portfolio. So that way you're demonstrating your knowledge online. Uh, anyone can look it up at any time. Now, that's all came out of a system called TPAC. Now, TPAC, originally back in uh, 1986, uh, and uh, they, they came up with the idea that pedagogical knowledge, which is the way, the understanding of how you teach, and content knowledge have an overlap. So, uh, and this is called pedagogical content knowledge. Now, the best way of explaining this is, I have knowledge of how to teach maths. I have knowledge of how to teach science. And I have knowledge of how to teach. So this is my science knowledge, maths, this is teaching. The way I teach maths is different to the way I teach science. So you get this pedagogical content knowledge. Now, recently, um, Simon Kobler came up with the idea that technical knowledge is also an aspect that makes up teaching. So when you put technical knowledge, this is made up of you know how to use a computer, how to, uh, how to use a directory whiteboard, uh, online stuff. Well, the way that we teach is linked to our technical knowledge, whether or not we're using a, a wiki class or um, teaching tools. However, there's also technical knowledge for, and content knowledge has an overlap. So in other words, if I'm using a piece of software, like a graphing software for maths, there's technical knowledge involved in that. Now, right in the middle is the technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge, which is called TPAC. Here, in this middle of this part, is where we sit, and this is where you're using you're using technology and your teaching methodology to teach the content. And this is and this is right in the middle. And this is all taken in context of the school and all the other environments. Now, now the role of the teacher is changing, and information communication and technology. Um, are completely entwined in how we teach today. Many students will have computers in the class, uh, whether they're owned as a bring their own device model or one-to-one -one model, but under the um, DER funding, which came out about three years ago, all year nine to 12 students were given laptops. Now, some schools didn't take up on this. Some schools um, implemented different types of programs, but generally, it's, it will be you'll find that most of the students in your classes will have laptops there in front of you. Now, this can be quite a powerful tool, because you can get them to look up something anytime you want. However, it can also be a, a problem tool because they can look up something anytime they want, such as you're trying to teach something, they can quickly look something up and go, that's incorrect. Or, hang on, can you explain this? Now, you can tap into that, you can use it, utilize, utilize it effectively, but really context or content is less of an issue now than the teacher controlling and modeling and engaging the class, differentiation, all the words that you'll hear later on. Um, one thing that we have to worry about though is whether or not we're using the technology effectively. Um, we as new ways of doing things happen, we have to work out how to engage the students and limit the risks that they are going to be involving themselves in, in the digital age. Now this could be preventing them from cyberbullying each other, um, understanding where they're coming from, and really making sure that they're using their computers and technology effectively. However, on the flip side, Overblocking in schools actually inhibits students' educational development because if you restrict their use of the internet, when they go out into the real world, they're, they're actually going to make poor choices. In a similar respect, we teach students not to bully each other or beat each other up. We don't, don't then send them out to the yard and make them sit on, on their own. When they do get into uh, problems in the yard, we bring them back in and we re-educate them. Same way as online. If you so, if you're preventing them from getting and doing inappropriate things, then you're not giving them the opportunity to overcome them and educate them on what is appropriate. So here we're talking about TPAC again, 
once again, there are bodies that stand over you in the uh, in your schoolyard or in, in your school environment that will be related to TPAC. So here, content knowledge is all based upon the ACARA and national um, our national curriculum. So that is controlled in our classes. Um, the technical knowledge is related back to ATSL and how we use technology in the classroom. There's ATSL, there's also the general capabilities. And then the pedagogical knowledge is overarched by uh, what the school in, in, instructs you to do, whether it's uh, students gifted and talented, learning support, parents, differentiation. So there's lots of different things that are going to impact on the way you teach. But you have got to aim for this star spot in the middle. You need to try and bring into all those different aspects so you can engage the students, give them the content they need, teach them the way it's going to um, encourage them to learn and use technology that's going to enhance your classroom. Now, a bit of background on this course. 2011, we were running three training sessions at Poly. Uh, computer skills, which we'll cover, presentation skills and Web 2.0. At the end of the year, we ran a ICT integration workshop um, and we had mm, about two thirds of the students attend. Uh, and after that, they had to submit a ICT task, which were, I then marked. It was not very effective because there was not very much feedback. In 2012, we ran online training sessions, similar to this one. Um, so there were videos, they were linked to Cal, and student, all of it was put up on my uni. Many of the students all accessed the material, the students then posted to the discussion boards, and then they had to submit their ICT task again. Again, I was the only one that read it, so rather than, so I was reading 150 or, of these articles, and really the only people that was informing was myself and the person that did it, and, so, and there was some feedback given. Last year, we used a program called LAMS, which I'll go into more detail in a little while. There was 43 discussion boards set up. This is based on some discussion boards for um, discussing what's done in the videos, and discussion boards for the rest of the 37 standards. Of the 212 students that were in the course, 205 of them enrolled in LAMS and 184 completed all eight sequences. This is about 91% completion. It's one of the highest that there's ever been that I've heard of. Um, however, I don't have documentation of what everyone else has done in the world. In the discussion boards, there was almost 2, 000, 2 million words posted by these 200 students. Now that work equates to about 10,000 words each. That sounds like a huge amount of work. However, it actually means you're only doing about 50 to 100 words per post. Now, there's a lot of stuff written. For me to mark and read two million words, hey, it's great because I'm learning about lots of stuff from you. However, what you want to do is setting up a peer group and peer assessment. So when you post, once you've finished doing your post, what you will then be asked to do is to read the 10 people above you and give your mark, give them a feedback. There's a star rating. We'll go into that in later detail. But this is so you're exposed to what other people are saying and up 10 people will mark what you're doing. I will then come through and the other moderators will then come through and read this and moderate whether or not the star rating is appropriate. And we're also assessing whether or not the people who are giving the stars are giving appropriate marks. Now, the reason we're doing this is, as of this year, once this is finished, you won't have to worry about doing assignments again, unless you're doing postgraduate studies. You'll be worried about marking. So here, you are gonna be assessing each other, as same as what you'll be doing as a teacher. It's hopefully a lot of fun. It's really interesting to read what other people write. And the good thing is, if you're one of the first people to do it, and there's only six people above you, you only have to mark six. So, better to get in early. Now, these are the different workshops we'll do. These will be in a slightly different order. And these are each of the major uh, standards. So, we're gonna cover the standards quite a few times, all of them at least twice. Uh, and that will give you quite a lot of time to reflect on what you're doing. All of these videos will be done, uh, These sequences will have a video attached where I'm explaining stuff to you. And the way it will work is you have 15 minute video, hopefully. I'll try and keep it to 15 minutes. There'll be five minutes of theory where I'm explaining the situation. There'll be five minutes of pedagogical uh, examples, reasoning and understanding, and five minutes of tutoring. Now these may change slightly depending on what we're doing, but this gives you a, a 15 minute window of all your lecture material. You can then go away look at what all the tutoring I, I, I'm doing for the different technologies we're using at the time, 
reflect on it, go on, and then spend the rest of the time working on your lamb sequence to post your things. Uh, students last year, some of them have said it took, uh, each sequence took about an hour, so therefore it's only about eight hours work. Some people said it took up to six hours per sequence. Now, the reasoning behind this is it, either some people put lots and lots of effort in what they were writing, some people chose to read a lot more than just the 10 people above them, uh, some people had no idea about technology. Now, if you have no idea about technology, it's good that you spend extra time to catch up. If you spend time reading everyone else's work and posting really well, it's going to be great for your e-portfolio. Um, and if you're struggling with the understanding of actual standards, you need to spend more time on that anyway. So you get, a, you get out what you put in. And at the end of it, what you'll be doing is, this is an example of the standards. So here I've got standard one, uh, know the students and how they learn. Under 1.1, I'm looking at physical, social, intellectual de uh, development characteristics of the students. This is the ICT elaboration, which was developed um, in collaboration with lots of other people. And so you need to reflect on this. Here is where you would put in your own idea. Now, this is a terrible way of doing it. Uh, it's done on just on a Word document. It's, however, it's a way of, con of collecting all the information together. So when you post them to LAMS, I would say post back into here. So you've got a collection of your work. You can then put it on your portfolio. This is an example of LAMS. Uh, so you, this is what I see. You won't see quite like this. Um, and the idea is you get introduction to what we're going to cover. You then watch the video, post to a discussion board. You then will work on your ATS or standards. There may be some kind of Q&A afterwards um, where I'm gathering some data or, or we're getting you to reflect upon it. Um, and then you work through until you've completed it. This is more so how you'll see it. You'll see the lines down the side of what you need to complete. Uh, as you're working, you'll see a red square of the one you're on. You'll see green squares of the ones that still have to be completed. And you'll see a green triangle, sorry, and a blue circle once things are completed. Uh, so this person is down to the, the standards part. You can see the different uh, standard 4.1, uh, which is support student participation. If you click in this, it takes you to the discussion board and you'll do your post. Now, the way we're, we're giving the star rating at the end of it, and I'll go into this again when we get further along, is does the post that the people you're looking at identify the actual standard? In other words, can you explain what this means? Secondly, um, do you have an idea for a tool technology or IST integration that addresses this standard? Uh, for example, in student support student participation, uh, that is getting the students to engage within what's going on in the class. Now, a technology way of doing this is maybe you're getting to post to a discussion board, uh, a blog, or um, whatever. Um, now, parts, so that's part A and B. Part C is does the post give pedagogical justification? So why would you get them to work on a blog? Well, the good reason about working on a blog is everybody's got a voice and everyone can, has the equal voice, people can post, it's teaching about uh, training about technology and education. So that I would get three stars if I did that. However, that will give me graduate knowledge and understanding. So it meets the requirements. A three star is fine. If you want to raise above that and say, well, I'm actually going to give a specific example of an ICT talk. So I, instead of just giving an example of a blog, I might say, well, I'm going to use EduBlogs. EduBlogs is good because it's protected. Um, not only the students in my class can read it, um, I, I have to check before they can post, and therefore it's a good talk. So that is an, ex an edu it's a specific example. Um, the other thing is if I'm giving a, uh, a reference or, um, or a link to that, which is going to help other people to get to the same thing. So it might be a link to a video, it might be a link to um, the Edu Blogs website, um, but I'm, either way I'm giving the pedagogical justification. So I get three stars for this, and then my bonus two stars here. If I did all that, that's five stars, which is really, really good. The way we're using the star rating is graduate knowledge and understanding is three stars. If you're doing an example of a tool or a specific example of the pedagogy, um, then you're gonna get four stars, which is a uh, proficient knowledge and understanding. This is not proficient level, it's proficient knowledge and understanding. Or if I'm doing both, then it's highly accomplished knowledge and understanding. That's what we're suggesting we can use as our terms. So what you're gonna be doing this semester is developing your ICT tools for teaching a school. You will be working on your e-portfolio as well, but more so, I'm making sure that you're prepared for when you get out into school. In semester two, all this, all your time is going to be switched to really developing your e-portfolio. You've already got your ICT skills, but instead of developing them for teaching, you're developing them for yourself. So you'll 
picking up extra skills for your portfolio.